here with a fantastic premises. Before I get started, I'd like to introduce you to the real brains behind Frasmo's artificial intelligence uh, solutions. Please welcome Frasmo Chida. Thanks, Chida. So, if you like, you can go and grab a selfie with him uh, from at our booth. Okay, I'm going to talk about uh, practical use of artificial intelligence for growing your business. I'm not going to talk about, uh, for example, intelligent assistance or singularity. I'm going to talk about what can be used today. First, briefly, very briefly about the company I founded, so Frosmo. Our mission is to uh, help companies to create superior digital experiences for people all around the world. This is the path we've chosen and we are really technology first company, software company, so we want to help our customers to take advantage of the latest technologies. What we really specialized into is uh, decoupling the back end from the front end. So really allowing uh, fast and flexible uh, system agnostic front end development and uh, taking advantage of data. We're about 100 professionals right now based in Helsinki. Our customers are medium to large uh, companies from various different consumer industries. How we see the market and why something like Frosmo is needed and how does artificial intelligence play a role in it? So, all of our customers typically have these uh, three different systems. So, some sort of content management, uh, some sort of commerce plat uh, e-commerce platform, and then of course you need marketing technologies to drive traffic. It's a quite complicated setup and uh, Usually companies become very slow when it comes to developing the front-end experience and also taking advantage of data between these three systems. And if we think about what is taking place in the world right now, is you cannot be slow. That's the first thing. The second thing is that if we or you or anyone wants to be in business in five to ten years, now it's just time to start uh, adopting artificial intelligence to your business. And usually, if you have a complicated uh, backend systems, it's uh, increasingly difficult to implement and adapt artificial intelligence uh, to your front end. And again, artificial intelligence is quite at early stages, so you have to be able to implement it quickly and try out and experiment what works for your business. So that justifies our market. How did we start building uh, solutions for artificial intelligence? We started about three and a half years ago uh, with the multi arm Bandit. Uh, are you guys familiar with that? some of you at least. So it's an algorithm for optimizing content, basically trying to figure out automatically which content is performing the best for which kind of users. Open source algorithms. We have now it running on hundreds of different sites and thousands of content elements are daily optimized automatically with these algorithms. Next year we started to ramp it up a notch, so we started to do automatic uh, artificial intelligence based segmentation for retail industry. Then uh, one and a half years ago we decided to invest 1 million euros supported by Finnish uh, Fund for Science and Technology to research different artificial intelligence prediction models. And uh, this spring we've launched our first product for artificial intelligent, uh, intelligence predictions. We're learning rapidly, it's accelerating all the time as it should be. So what we really built and learned throughout these years, especially during the last one and a half years. First thing is that 
in order to take advantage of artificial intelligence predictions is to define a question. And uh, the question has to be defined so that the machine can answer it. So there has to be an answer you know. So we have to define the question so that uh, there's an outcome what we're looking for. So we can tell the machine this is, this is what should happen. We cannot have an open-ended question. So our first successful question when we started this path was uh, who is going to quit being your customer? So you have paying customers now. Who of them will quit being your paying customer? Pretty important question, right? What did we do after that? Data. Everyone's Everyone has been saying about data for years now. It's the, the real thing you really, really needed. When we started to work with our customers, uh, we chose uh, betting as the first industry. Why? Betting has huge amount of data, transactions happening all the time. In one hour you get easily tens of thousands of transactions when people make wages and bets. So we started working with our betting clients and we discovered that if you want to have a proper model, you need to have data, CRM data from many years. So let's say three years of CRM data, three years of balances from your customers, deposits, withdrawals, wagers, so the bets they've made and demographics. I can assure you it's a quite a lot of data. Let's say you have a few million players and you take a few years of data of this. And then the problem becomes that this data is quite scattered everywhere. So what you need to do is you really need to start putting a lot of effort on cleaning the data. So you have to convert it into a format where the machine can take it and suck it in all the time. Otherwise, if you do it manually, you're in deep trouble. So really getting the data. After the question, getting the data. After that, uh, we have to mine the data. What does it mean? Everyone's talking about ma data mining. Well, it really is about making sure that the data that the machine uses makes sense. So, we have to visualize it. I will tell you soon why. Then we have to make sure that we compare customers who have been customers the same amount of time. Doesn't make sense to compare someone who's been a customer three years and then quit to a customer who is a customer for two months. It's a different thing. You have to make sure they're in the uh, correct buckets. After that, what we do is we can then start the training. And the question really defines what kind of algorithms we use it for it. We chose and went through a lot of different kind of algorithms to find the perfect one, I will soon tell a little bit more about that, but this is the part where the machine divides the data into two sets. The other set is the one it uses to make sure if the prediction was right or not. So it rapidly goes through this huge amount of data of millions of peoples, people who have been do doing all these things, and it makes guess bets. Which of these things, which of this data and activity that has happened, taken place, defines that the user is going to be over, quit using your service? And then it checks from the other sort of data, was it correct or not? And it does this really super fast and the end outcome is probability per customer. So probability of the customer be quitting using your service. And uh, we managed to create this and a bunch of other predictions into a repeatable automated process, making, of course, sure that you have to have the data. What are the results? We can tell you, at least the betting companies, with 98% accuracy, if the customer is going to be an ex-customer. It's quite valuable information, I'd say. Uh, so, that's a practical example. What customers can then do is, of course, to communicate with them. I'll tell you soon about that. But uh, let's come back quickly to those algorithms. So these algorithms are not developed by us. 
The most powerful software companies and open source communities in the world are developing and fine-tuning these algorithms. It's best to use those algorithms. The key is to choose the right algorithm for that question you defined in the beginning. So for this kind of question, who is going to quit being your customer, it means it's a binary classification. It means yes or no. Simple answer. So you use binary classification that, then there's that, I spoke about the time series, so we need to make sure that the machine can read it and use a system, statistical model called logistic regression to make this prediction, to learn. You will also be able to answer a question like, who will become a VIP, a loyal client to you, not just churn. Next level, we want to do more advanced stuff. We don't want to have a binary answer, yes or no. But what we want to do is we want to understand the nuances. So we use something which I call the Netflix prediction or Netflix recommendation. This is what the Amazon also uses, collaborative filtering problem. What it does, it basically compares and reads data either based on people or items. So it checks who all have bought, for example, this kind of items or what have these kind of users done and it creates a fantastic matrix and it starts to give you different kind of probabilities. But, yeah, it's not enough, of course, to just create the model, but what you have to do is you have to take it into action. So the key thing is that once you've created the model, right there, you have to follow what is happening real time at the site put it back to the model and it gives you a new prediction so that during the same session you can change the user interface of your site. And this is the more advanced. Unfortunately I'm running out of time to tell you more but we have a booth here, happy to tell you more. Uh, that's the quick introduction to artificial intelligence in practice. Thank you.